after the last, well maybe not the last episode, after the experiences of trying to do the controls ourselves, we realised it was costing way too much money, taking way too much time, and we had very little confidence that we were actually making something that was safe at the end of the day. And that's our top priority. So we reached out to Tom Debris. This is Tom. Hello. Of Simp BMS fame, now of Engovis. That's his new company. Yes. And he guided us, or got on board with us, and I'll hand you over to Tom to give a little explanation as to what he's done and he's doing. He's basically our saviour. <laughs> So uh, Pete and Opto Innovation reached out to me because they were working on a Mini and they wanted to use the batteries. So they were gonna go with Simp BMS, so that's how we got in touch. Uh, however, on the background, I was working on different developments for controlling the Outlander stuff myself. Uh, so I've decided why not jump on board with Opto Innovation and work together on this project to try and get a, yeah, a working vehicle as soon as possible. So, just to recap what's in the Mini, we have the Mitsubishi Outlander rear motor powering the front wheels of the Mini. That's got the Mitsubishi Outlander rear inverter connected to it, and alongside that is the Mitsubishi Outlander charger slash DC-DC. All of that is powered by the BMW hybrid battery pack which is in the rear of the Mini. I'll hand you over to Tom who's going to explain how all them things talk to each other and behave. Uh, so, as Pete said, there's the components out of the Outlander are meant to work together, which is a good thing. So, what we have done is we got a controller that controls the Outlander stuff as if they were inside an Outlander. All we've done is reverse engineered the CAN bus and created the signals required to make it move. Uh, the battery pack in the rear from the BMW Hybrid We've done the same thing. We figured out how the batteries communicate and use the Synth BMS software as a starting point to create a way of taking those values and using them to control the Outlander stuff and keep everything within the safe operating conditions. So we mounted all the components into the Mini. We've created a prototype wiring loom and then that was the point where we got Tom physically on site or asked Tom if he would physically come to site. Yes to start his process of development. Yes, uh, so the key thing was what we've already established before was we have all the information to make the things work independently. We have the SIP BMS software, we have the open inverter solution to make the motor spin, but when we tie it all together, will it still work in a car? So when I came down here to visit and the car was ready to go, we started off with simple tests like do the batteries actually report? Can we see all the voltages? Can we see all the cell information? Uh, when we key on the car, do the contactors come on in the correct sequence? When we press on the pedal, can we read the pedal? Can we calibrate the pedal? Um, all building up to spinning the wheels while the car was in the air to get a first feel for, does it make a lot of noise when the wheels spin? Do the wheels spin freely? Is it controllable with the pedal and the, uh, the throttle pedal and the brake pedal before actually taking it out on the road and seeing what it actually feels like to drive for the first time? So we've now driven the Mini for the first time and I have to say it, it was awesome. <laughs> Absolutely love it. But, uh, completely not what I expected. It's very bumpy but I think that's just traditional Mini. Uh, but to give you some sort of feel, Tom's going to take you out for a test drive in it now. See how that goes. All right, that's good. The original Mini of course had a clutch, but that's now missing. We've gone for an approach that is in line with the modern EV, so you can drive it off one pedal, only off the throttle pedal. This means we got regen, 
The idea is for the regen to be, so it slows the car down, but also allows you to not have to use the brakes because sometimes on these minis, that's the worst part of the drivetrain. So at the moment, the car is set up so it only is using 25% of the maximum capable torque of the Outlander. This is enough to get the testing done. And as you can probably see, it's quite bumpy. <laughs> so as I was saying, we're going for the one pedal feel. So that means that we can accelerate. This is not too fast, but when we come off the pedal, we slow down. However, the slowdown is gradual, and with the decrease in speed, so does the region. This allows us to go down, for example, a hill without any of the feet on the pedal and maintain a constant speed downhill. But if we want to, we can then roll out of it by applying a little bit of throttle. Uh, so for us, the main thing, as we said, is to get the integration between the batteries and the drivetrain working perfectly. So because I have started with the SIP BMS software as a base, it means things like limiting the drivetrain when the battery gets too low or too hot or we're drawing too much current is very straightforward and it feels natural. Wait, let's get, let's get Pete in it. Yeah. And okay, so... When you're driving an original classic Mini, there's a lot of noise, the gearbox whine. It's all very uh, acoustic, shall we say. And I was quite surprised, and pleasantly surprised, when you put your foot down in the EV Mini, you get a nice little whine. It's not unlike an original Mini. Obviously it's different, but it's not quite as aggressive on your senses, but it's still it feels in keeping. Noise. Yeah, it feels in keeping. It has its own sound, shall we say. Which is all part of the character of a Mini. It might not be the same character, but it's still character. So, an interesting feature that I've never really experienced is the regen braking. So, if we get to a good speed, and I lift off the pedal, it feels just like engine braking in a standard Mini, but that's actually the regen, recharge in the batteries, which is another part of the driving experience that makes it feel more familiar while not being familiar. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Okay, so ultimately, we were very nervous about making a Mini no longer a Mini, but once you've had a go at this, <laughs> It is a mini, and it's awesome. <laughs> so we're currently only running at 25% of the motor power, but that feels very, very pokey, shall we say, and not unlike the original mini power output. Okay, uh, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for coming down, Tom, and uh, no we've had a good time. Well, I've had an amazing time because I got to drive my Mini, but... <laughs> okay, as usual, if you could like, share, subscribe, massively appreciated. Okay, so Tom's left for the day, so it's time for me to just play. <laughs>